Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Are you struggling with total body surface area burned using the rule of nines and then calculating fluid resuscitation using the Parkland formula? We'll stick around because that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Okay, so again, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk all about how to determine total body surface area burned using the rule of nines, which is a very common, easy to remember way to calculate TBSA. We are also going to learn how to calculate fluid resuscitation using the Parkland formula. So remember in second and third degree burns, the first phase of burn management is called the emergent phase. And that is where the client is going to be struggling with fluid volume deficit, could lead to hypovolemic shock and circulatory collapse. So fluid resuscitation is extremely necessary and we can calculate the correct amount of fluid necessary for the client using the Parkland formula. Well, let's start with TBSA using the rule of nines. So again, on this picture, you see very, very similar pictures to what I'm sure you've already seen from your instructors or in your textbook, but let's break it down a little further. So let's start at the top of the body. Remember the total head is 9%. So we have a front of the head anterior and a back of the head posterior. Both of those are four and a half percent. The total head is nine, front is four and a half, back is four and a half percent. Now moving on to the trunk, the entire anterior trunk is 18%. The entire posterior or back of the trunk is 18%. However, that can be further divided into an upper anterior, a lower anterior, and an upper posterior and a lower posterior worth 9% each. So total anterior 18%, upper anterior nine, lower anterior nine, and you can do the same on the back or the posterior thorax. Now the entire arm is going to be 9%, but we can further break that down into the anterior aspect of the arm being four and a half percent and the posterior aspect of the arm being four and a half percent. The perineum or the genitalia will be 1%. And then as we move to the lower half of the body, each leg entire leg is 18%. However, that can be subdivided into anterior 9%, posterior 9%, and further divided into upper anterior, lower anterior, upper posterior, and lower posterior at four and a half percent. So just to recap, each leg is 18%. The back is 9%, the entire back of the leg, the entire front of the leg is 9%. However, we can further divide into the top anterior part of the leg at four and a half, the bottom anterior at four and a half, the top posterior at four and a half, and the bottom posterior at four and a half. Now on this slide, you'll just see that a little easier in a table. So on the previous slide, it was written out in text. Now it's just in a table. So again, each arm, total arm 9%, anterior trunk 18, posterior trunk 18, anterior head and neck four and a half, posterior head and neck four and a half, each leg 18% and that genitalia as 1%. But keep in mind, as I previously discussed, many of these areas can be subdivided into smaller percentages. Let's try this practice question. A client sustained a burn injury and experienced burns to the posterior legs, the posterior thorax, and the posterior half of the head. What is the total body surface area burned? And so the answer to this question is going to be 40.5%. So let's break that down. How did I come up with that answer? Well, the posterior legs were burned. So each leg is 18%, but the posterior side only is 9%. But we have both posterior legs. So nine for the right posterior, nine for the left posterior. That's gonna give us our first 18%. The posterior thorax, the entire posterior thorax is 18%. And then the posterior half of the head is four and a half percent. The entire head is nine, posterior half only is four and a half. That gives us 40.5% total. And let's talk about the Parkland formula. Now this remember does only apply to second and third degree burns. So the beginning of the Parkland formula, so what you see here in orange is to calculate the total volume that we are going to administer in 24 hours. So the total volume in 24 hours. 
To get that calculation, you take the number four, we multiply that times the total body surface area burned, which you've already figured out using your rule of nines. And then we're gonna further multiply that number by the weight of the client in kilograms. Now, once we have the total volume that we're going to administer in 24 hours, we're going to give exactly one half of that total volume in the first eight hours. And we're gonna give the second half of that volume in the next 16 hours. And I know that sounds confusing, but let's do some practice questions. A nurse is providing fluid resuscitation to a client who weighs 55 kilograms with burns on 38% of the body. So the first question, and guys pay super close attention to what the question is asking you, because that's where you can get really tripped up on a test question. This question is asking us for total milliliters that we will administer to this client. So total milliliters. And so, of course, the answer to this question is going to be 8,360. And let's look at how we came up with that answer. So remember, you take the number four, you multiply it times the client's weight in kilograms, which is 55, times the TBSA, which is 38 in this scenario. So four times 55 times 38 is 8,360. Now, some of you are thinking, wow, that's a lot of fluid. That can't be right. But remember, we are treating fluid volume deficit and preventing or treating hypovolemic shock. You are going to give a lot of fluid to these clients. Okay, let's move on. Now we have our same client who weighs 55 kilograms with burns on 38% of the body. We've already determined that our total volume is 8,360 milliliters over 24 hours. So the question is, how many milliliters will you deliver in the first eight hours? How many milliliters will you deliver in the first eight hours? So we're gonna take 8,360 and we're just gonna divide it in half because re remember we give half of the total volume in the first eight hours. And so that answer will be 4,180. So again, we just took 8,360 and we divided it by two. Now the question is how many milliliters per hour are you going to deliver that volume? How many milliliters per hour to deliver that volume? So we're going to say 4,180 divided by eight. And now we are going to give 523 milliliters per hour. Yes, that sounds like a lot of fluid. It is. We're treating hypovolemic shock or preventing hypovolemic shock and fluid volume deficit. Now the next question is how many milliliters will we administer in the next 16 hours? So let's think back to our Parkland formula. We get total volume, which is 8,360. We give half in the first eight hours and half in the second 16. So we're going to give the total milliliters in 16 hours, 4,180. We give 4,180 in the first eight hours and we get 4,180 in the second 16. Both of those are exactly half of 8,360, which is our total in 24 hours. Now the final question is, what is the rate in milliliters per hour to administer 4,180 over that 16 hours? And so we're gonna take 4,180 and we're going to divide it by 16. And that means in the second 16 hours, we're going to deliver two, 261 milliliters per hour. So some of you may be sitting here and thinking, wow, you lost me, I'm super confused. So let's look at another practice question. So here we have a client who sustained a burn injury again to the posterior legs, the posterior thorax, and the posterior half of the head. So we've already figured out that that is a TBSA of 40.5. But now we have a client that weighs 48 kilograms. So the first question is total fluid resuscitation volume in 24 hours. So remember that's the number four times your TBSA times the client's weight in kilograms. And I'll give you a minute to work that out on your calculator. And the answer is going to be 7,776 total milliliters in 24 hours. So the number four times 40.5, that's the TBSA, times 48 kilograms, that's how much the patient weighs. How much fluid are we gonna administer in the first eight? So we're gonna take our total volume, that we're going to administer in 24 hours, which we already figured out, 7776 total milliliters. We're gonna divide that by two because we're gonna give half in the first eight, half in the second 16. 
So the answer in the first eight is 3,888 milliliters. And then to determine how much per hour we're gonna set our infusion pump, we just take 3,888 and divide it by eight. That gives us an hourly rate of 486 milliliters per hour. So let's look at this question. A client sustained a burn injury and burns to the anterior upper legs, the anterior thorax and the perineum. What is our TBSA according to the rule of nines? I'll give you a couple of seconds to figure this one out on your own and then we'll talk about the answer. And the answer to this is 28%. Let's break that down. Our anterior upper legs. Well, each leg is 18%. The anterior entire leg is 9%. So if the entire anterior aspect is nine, we only want half of that, that's four and a half, but we want both legs. So four and a half of the right anterior upper leg and four and a half of the left anterior upper leg, total of 9%. Anterior thorax, entire anterior thorax is 18%. Perineum is 1%. Therefore, our total TBSA is 28%. Okay, let's further take this client with a TBSA of 28% and let's figure out our fluid resuscitation. So our TBSA is 28% and our client weighs 68 kilograms. So total fluid resuscitation, remember, is four milliliters times 28%. TBSA times 68 kilograms of weight. And I'll give you a minute to work that out on your calculator. And so our total fluid resuscitation in 24 hours, four times 28 times 68 is 7,616 milliliters. Total volume we're going to administer in 24 hours. Now remember, Parkland formula says we give half of that in eight hours and half of it in the second 16 hours. So in eight hours, we administer exactly half, which is 3,808 milliliters. So 7,616 divided by two. And then how many milliliters per hour for the first eight? 3,808 divided by eight gives us 476 milliliters per hour in the first eight hours. In the second 16, we're gonna take that 3,808, we're gonna divide it by 16, because remember we give half of the total volume in the first eight, half in the second 16. So we give 3,808 in the first eight hours, 3,808 in the second 16. In the first eight, that's 476 milliliters per hour. In the second 16, that is 238 milliliters per hour. So all I did was take 3808 and divide it by 16. Okay, so some of you are thinking, I've got this, I can do it, no problem. Others of you are thinking, wait, wait, I need a little bit more practice. Well, I have some more practice for you. If you want to head over to my Etsy shop, I will put the link in the description box below. I have a TBSA and Parkland formula practice study guide in which you will take care of five clients. And if for each client, you will determine their TBSA and you will work through all of the problems related to the Parkland formula. So if you're interested in that product, do check out the description box below. Have a wonderful day. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next video.